We are now joined by the University of Texas coach, Shaka Smart. Coach, your thoughts about the upcoming season? Great to be here today in Kansas City. Excited about having Matt Coleman, Dylan Osikowski, and Kerwin Roach on his birthday here with me. Uh, it's always a good feeling to have good players and some players with some experience that come with you to media day. Uh, so very excited about those three guys. Our guys have been working extremely hard in practice. We have not scrimmaged against anyone else yet. So uh, for us, we're really looking forward to doing that soon, getting a chance to test ourselves against somebody in a different uniform. For us, this month has been all about consolidating good habits and just trying to gain consistency in doing the things that go into winning. Uh, whether it's at home or on the road, whether it's on offense or on defense. Uh, we've got five new guys that, when they first started practice, knew nothing about college basketball and are slowly but surely learning. Uh, but they've got a long way to go. And uh, thankfully, we have some guys that have been around in the Big 12 for a little while and that can teach them the ropes. Uh, so we, I, I like our blend of uh, returning guys and new guys. And our job now is to put them together and uh, go win a lot of games. Okay, questions for Coach. We'll start in the middle, in the back. Uh, Shaka, obviously, Andrew Jones, I'm sorry, Meyer Mack, FESPN. Uh, Andrew Jones has been asked one of the better stories in, in college basketball, his, his comeback. Uh, what's it been like just to watch his progress? And with the toe injury, uh, what are the realistic chances that we might see him back on the court this season? Well, first of all, his progress is, as you mentioned, one of the best things that, that that's happened uh, you know, in recent memory. He's come so far from early January when he was first diagnosed and uh, he had to immediately go to the hospital and it seemed like just a matter of days and he was losing weight, uh, had to get on treatment right away. Uh, his attitude throughout has been phenomenal. He's, he's a fighter. He's got a great level of toughness about him. He's been through a lot of challenging days, challenging times, as has his family. And they're as strong as, as anyone I've been around. Uh, he fought his way all the way back to coming back to being a, a full-time student at the University of Texas and being a student athlete who's uh, been competing with our guys in workouts and practice and lifting weights. As you mentioned, a few weeks ago, he broke his toe, uh, which uh, was a temporary setback you know thankfully it's it's not something that'll have him out for too long uh, we're hopeful that by the end of the week that he'll be back on the court uh, being able to play uh, and do some things in practice probably won't be able to uh, go fully uh, live by the end of the week but hopefully very soon in terms of him playing this year uh, our number one goal all along has just been to help him get back to full strength uh, we knew that that was going to take time I mean, he literally uh, got done with his treatment in the summer in late August and then a week later enrolled as a full-time student athlete. So it's only been a couple months really uh, since he's been back in school and, and has been training full-time with us. But he's done a really good job. He's gained a lot of strength back. Uh, he's gained some of his explosiveness back. Uh, you know, He'll be the first to tell you he's not all the way where he was physically um, as a player yet, but the guy's work ethic is phenomenal, and I certainly wouldn't put it past him to be able to work his way back uh, to where he was as a player. So we're just going to see uh, what makes the most sense for him uh, and for our team. Obviously, when we go out there for games at all times with all of our players, we want to put them and our team in a position to be successful. But overall, we're just super excited to have him back. Question on the outside left. Uh, Coach Fulton Kasser, KGHK. With Dylan Osetkowski, you really stepped up for your squad both offensively and defensively last season. What have you seen kind of his development this past offseason, and what do, you, what do you look forward to seeing out of him uh, as, as more of an on-court leader for your squad this year? Well, the biggest thing with Dylan that is different this year as opposed to last year is he has a year under his belt playing at Texas and playing in the Big 12. I just think that's incredibly valuable for someone that last year was really feeling his way around uh, as someone who'd sat out the year before and then transferred from Tulane previous to that. 
He's done a terrific job in the offseason on his game and his body. He's been very, very diligent about his diet and his exercise. Uh, you know, all of our guys don't necessarily have the exact same regimen. He's on a very, very different uh, approach in terms of strength and conditioning compared to other guys. For instance, he was up at 6.30 this morning on the bike in, in the hotel just getting his workout in to make sure uh, his training loads where it needs to be. Uh, but he's been very mature about that. Um, you know, the good thing for him is that he's been through it before and he's made a lot of progress. He knows some of the twists and turns that are coming. And I think he can be a terrific leader, first and foremost, by example. And secondly, uh, vocally with his teammates, because the guys really, really respect him. We've got a question in the, all the way against the platform on the right, Coach, straight back. Hey, Coach. Hi. Two questions. First, the preseason poll, Kansas number one, K-State two, you guys tied for fourth. Anything about that that surprises you? No. You want me to elaborate on that? Yeah, just the fact that, uh, you know, Kansas again number one, but K-State up to number two, and then you guys tied for fourth. Well, K-State went to the lead eight last year uh, and had a terrific team and has almost everybody back from that team, so it makes a lot of sense. I think in a lot of conferences, they might get picked first, but uh, Kansas has won the Big 12 so many years in a row that uh, it, it sure makes a lot of sense to pick them. Plus, when you look at who they have back and who they recruited, uh, you know, they a lot of people are picking them number one in the country, let alone the Big 12. As for the rest of the league, I think there's a ton of great teams in our conference. It's not much different than previous years. You know, the one thing about the Big 12 I think that's different than, than maybe other leagues out there is Every program has had a lot of success uh, at different times, even in, in, in the last three years. Every team's been in the NCAA tournament. Every team other than Kansas and West Virginia has not been in the NCAA tournament at least once in the last three years. So there's a lot of parity. There's a lot of people that beat up on each other in our conference. And that preseason poll, I know it's a big deal right now, but you know it really doesn't matter when the, when the games start because it's going to be decided on the court. And the other question is they announced today that they are extending the Big 12 tournament here in Kansas City till 2024. What do you think about that? You like coming here? Do you think it's a good location for all the teams to come in? I think it's a great location for the Big 12 with all things considered. Uh, when you factor in uh, the venue, uh, the, the way that the folks in Kansas City embrace this conference tournament, uh, the professionalism with which this tournament is treated. Uh, obviously, you have some very, very passionate fan bases that are relatively close, uh, so that impacts attendance. Uh, so I think when you factor all those things in, it, it makes a lot of sense. Got time for one final question for Coach. All right, Coach, you got off easy. Thank Best you. Best of luck for the season. 